we have a crisis in the world, tremendous crisis, and also crisis in our consciousness, in us. I see the urgency of change, radical revolution, mutation in the mind. I see it. It is necessary. There is complete quietness of the mind, and that which is silent has vast space. Only then that which is nameless comes into being. This is Urgency of Change, the Krishnamurti podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 25 of Urgency of Change. This week's episode features Krishnamurti in conversation with Ronald Eyre, in which they ask whether fear can be completely wiped away. Next week's episode is an interview by Eric Robson. This is a podcast from Krishnamurti Foundation Trust, based at Brockwood Park in the UK. Please visit our updated website at kfoundation.org, where you can find more information about Krishnamurti, along with more than 20 in-depth articles, each based on the central theme in his work, hand-picked by the Foundation staff. You can also find daily quotes on Instagram and Facebook at Krishnamurti Foundation Trust. Ronald Eyre was a leading director for cinema, opera, television and the theatre. He was also a television presenter and writer. His most well-known series was The Long Search, a survey of world religions. Recorded at Brockwood in 1984, this conversation with Krishnamurti explores playfulness and distraction, the cycle of fear, and whether we do anything we love. Krishnamurti asks if we are afraid of life. What are love and death? Why is there such a tremendous craving inwardly? What is the root of fear? Why does thought enter into the realm of the psyche? What is creation that is not born out of knowledge? I'd like to ask you about playfulness, which matters to me more and more. I seem to... Playful. Playfulness. Being able to... Knowing that if I tackle a piece of work with a certain solemnity, however serious I am, it sort of destroys itself. But if there is in it an element of, in my approach of playfulness, of letting it happen... I wonder mm. what you mean by playfulness. Well, I suppose over-solemnity is rather conceited. I mean, you have an idea that you'd like to do this, you'd like to finish it. You have the end in the beginning. You know what it's going to be. What I mean by playfulness is allowing for things to come in from the side which you hadn't expected, thoughts or I mean, notions. Yes, you mean... When you're working, you're concentrating. Yes. And when that concentration is not focused, then the other things... Yes, you see, I was in. brought up, like many of us, in a very puritanical way, brought up to believe that effort was a fine thing. And then I believe I'm having to learn that effort is a double-edged matter and that it can be over-solemn, it can push you towards conclusions, it can blind you and deafen you to all sorts of things you should be hearing and seeing. And that you need, as I need, I feel, to kind of sit back and play more. Does that... Yeah, yeah um, that's right. Letting other thoughts come in rather than be, have one continuous... That's right. ...effort and thought. Yes. And let it organically shift so that it shapes itself organically, maybe in a direction you hadn't intended. Which would be, would you say that distraction is necessary? It is that. Yes, and it is distraction, isn't it? It's to do with, um, I would, well, if I could use a phrase like mindful distraction. It's not merely being open they, to anything. Empty-minded. That's quite. right. So, concentration, a sense of distraction of which you are aware. Mm, that's right. Feels quite important. Yeah. But when you are aware that it's distraction, is it distraction? 
It's extremely subtle concentration, perhaps. That's what I'm asking. Yes, I feel, I feel it to be. I feel that when an element of... F- well, it's connected with fear, I think. When an yeah. element of fear comes into it, a That's fear that you may go wrong or that something unwelcome may happen, then it freezes you. And you think you're concentrating, you're actually <laughs> shutting out. Is that, would you say that's correct? That's partly, isn't it, only... What can we... Discuss what is concentration and then come to the other. Mm. What do we mean when we say concentrate? To focus one's thought. Focus feels a bit... Positive, as yes, your intention yeah. in, is made yeah. a little too much in it. Yeah, concentrate on what one is doing. Yes. Don't let anything come in. To be available totally to what one is doing. Yes, all right. Is another way of putting it. What does that do when one is so centred, focused... Aren't you shutting off every other form of thought, every other form of distraction, if you can use that word? Yes. So you build a wall around yourself oh. and say, no, please, don't think of anything, let's think about this. There's a distinction, isn't there, though, between somebody, as it were, when you did that gesture, it was a slightly worried gesture, yeah, you yeah. know, please don't bother me, yeah, I'm concentrating right. on this. That's right. Now, that, I think, is possibly, although we all, I certainly, do it quite a lot, it seems to me to have fear in it, and to be probably not so useful as an openness to a thing, which merely quietly presses other things to the side. I'm not sure. Ah. Tell me more. I mean, could we begin by discussing what, is con- what makes us concentrate? Mm. Will, desire, an end to achieve, a motive, a direction, a purpose, an intensified desire which is a will, and say, this I must do. This is necessary, I concentrate, and therefore I push aside every other thought comes in. Mm. So I build a wall around myself for a moment, Mm. and uh, there. So uh, that's a form of resistance. That's a form of... May I put it differently? It's a self-centred attempt to hold something. Which then becomes fear. Yes, I see. Oh. It's quite certain, I find, that every when you describe that and the shutting out, I know that that is a prelude to failure. Yes. It's the thing that happens before you can't do it. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. So I'm interested in the, the further state of what is, what is the state then in which you are really... Well, we have to use the word concentrate again because it's the language, but perhaps there is another word. There's another word. You are really There's another freely word. open and available for... Yes, yeah. another things. word, attention. Attention, more useful, yes. Mm. But that's much more complicated. Not what is available, but to attain. In in attention, do you allow yourself to be surprised by things that come in to you? I I would like to discuss that a little bit. Mm. When one is attending, which means giving all your energy, all your sensitivity, your 
nervous organism as well. As well. Not only hearing, eyes, everything is tremendously alive. Hmm. In that state of attention, there is no centre as the me attending. Therefore, there is no fear in that. Ah, yes. I don't know if you mm. make much of clear. I understand, absolutely, yes. Mm. We, we have been trained from childhood to, atta- to concentrate. Mm. Teach us and concentrate. Don't look out of the window. Mm. Mm. And so there is a contradiction there. I won't look out. Mm. So fear begins. So, effort. So, why I started talking about playfulness was entirely in this area. That yeah. I, I'm interested in that very necessary and fearless attention, you may say, yes. which is not unserious, but it isn't solemn. There's a, there's no, a attention line. is attention. It's just where yes, it is. Sir. See, I'm interested in the word play because... It happens that professionally, all my life, I, as a child who never got tired of stories, that's been my burden and my pleasure, so I naturally get work in a theatre, and I tell stories to myself and others, or I write them. And then the word play, of course, happens to be the word given to these events. And um, when I was working, when I was in India making uh, some films... You saw in, that big film, that statue which of Shiva play. playing. Playing, Absolutely. And Leela as of play. Of course, Leela is. And I wanted you to talk to me about that, because it seems wonderful that the word play should actually be the word to describe the way things are. That's why when I... Dancing. Hmm? Hmm. Um, playing football. Playing golf and so on. Sure. Why have those things become important? You play them. Yes. You dance. Yes. But when we say, I say release. Yes. Away from concentration. Yes. Mm. That's what we are doing. Work all day in our office, nine to five or two days, and then go to a bar, drink, Distracted, you know, mm. cinema, this, that, mm. the other. So there is tremendous contradiction in this. And none of it is play. It, none of it is play. <laughs> none of it. It's yeah. a distraction. Distraction isn't a play. I have an increasing feeling. I mean, I, I don't give myself programs for what I'm on earth for, but I, I give myself a little program. Just to think that that's, what, that's my job, it seems to me, is to increase the amount of play. In one way of putting it. Does that make sense to you? To increase the possibility in my life, or even in things which could be drudgery. It's kind of to avoid drudgery. That does not mean altering your job. No, no, of course not. But suppose if we drop the word distraction, hmm. play for a moment, hmm. then what happens? How do you mean? I've been working in the factory. And it's a terribly tiring, dirty, noisy, smelly job. I come home or go to bar, and there I relax. Take a drink and all the rest. Go home, in that state of relaxation, the wife begins to quarrel say something, mm. I get irritated, mm. and we keep that up. And in between sex and all that, but I keep that going. So sex becomes a distraction, you follow? Mm. So the whole thing, the job forces me to distraction. Mm. 
Oh, in the nightclub, you know the word. Yeah, sure. I suppose I can, I can look on quite areas of my life. I think of myself as very free-footed because I move from job to job. That in another sense, I move from distraction to distraction. I actually move, I go to a situation for comfort if you take on a new job. It feels comfortable temporarily and then eventually it becomes its own straight jacket and yeah. imprisons you and you have to move from that prison. So yeah. I don't know quite, well, I know there must be an alternative. See, in all this, there is an element of fear. I'm not, my do, I'm not do, doing my job properly. Mm. I drank too much mm. or sex too much. Mm. And my God, my, I'm losing, you follow? Mm. So there's this cycle of fear set going. Mm. Now we can't crack that cycle by thinking, cracking that cycle, can we? First of all, we say, come, do we do anything that we love? <laughs> Not much. No. If anything. You penny. Yeah. I'm I'm one is forced by circumstances. <coughs> Specialized as a carpenter or as a scientist or a writer and you know all that. So gradually, the brain itself becomes very, very narrow, limited. And that limitation itself becomes a ball. Mm. Right? Mm. And then break that. Mm. Go to play beer, sex, sure. nightclubs, go sure. golf, football. Mm. There's almost a process in each of these things of that for the moment of change, it's almost as if a whiff of oxygen is given to you, a whiff of extra energy at the moment of change. And then as soon as you get into the next phase, whatever it is, beer or sex or whatever the yes, distraction yes, may yes. be, it hardens up yeah. and uh, so, the oxygen is then drawn away. So is there an energy which is not wasted at all? Mm. And there's no fear. And can, can this energy ever be constantly available? Is it there? Is it there? Of course. But I misuse it. Mm. I do something which I hate to do. Mm. I want to go on a lovely morning like this for a walk, but my wife says, go to, let's go to church. Yes, that's right. Yes. Or so what, want, what are we frightened of then? Are we talking, that's what I wanted to ask, are we talking of the ending of fear and therefore living, not playing and not playing? Mm. Mm. Do you think we think we'll die? Huh? Do you think we think we will die if of we don't have the next course, diversion? Of course, of course. There's this terrible fear of death. In many subtle forms. Of course. Hmm. So, I mean... I don't know if you yes. want to go into all that. Please, I do, yes. See, that involves a becoming. Not only physical becoming, I'm weak, but I'm a get strong. Hmm. I am, I, I have to run so much, but I will follow get physically well. And I make tremendous efforts towards that. They are all doing that now. That's the fashion. Mm. And has that spilt over into the psychological realm? 
I don't know if I'm convinced. Yes, I understand. You mean, we're not talking about the fear of death, we're talking about trying to avoid the cycle of life in life, a way. Yes. Yes. Therefore, if I'm afraid of life, <laughs> mm. so the whole way of living has become a movement in fear. Fear of death, fear of losing job, fear of my wife or husband, my, uh, I'm not becoming a successful man. I am. Yes. All, this whole way of living has become step by step leading to ultimate fear of death. Yes, good. That I, that's wonderful, yes. All fear has these roots going back yeah, to fear of death. Fear. And the moment that, if fear is to be absent at any moment, it's some conquest of death. No, let's say, no, just a minute. If we understand living, what the, the significance of living, not this perpetual battle, struggle, conflict, uh, mm. I must have, I'm mm. more, better, mm. the constant measurement with myself with somebody else. Mm. He's famous, but oh, I must become famous. He's on the television, I'm not. <laughs> you know, this terrible sense of poverty. Yes. Mm. And in the attempt to be rich, there is the burden of fear. I may never get rich, mm. because there's somebody much richer. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, in a sense, I see that the co that these little prisons we inhabit, one by yeah. one, these little mm. distractions, um, are the, the fact that we know as we go into them that they're incomplete. There is something in us that knows that it won't work. So that's the cause of great misery. I mean, at least yes, sir. Uh, if you go into a place where you think it may be nice, you're not deceiving yourself until it becomes nasty. But there's something in us that knows that it doesn't work. We know it doesn't work, but we go on with Isn't it. Isn't that strange? Mm. Like war, we know it's appalling. Yes. Most wasteful, destructive. I don't know, I heard the other day, you know, when they had the D-Day celebration? Yes. 20,000 young men were killed at first... Huh? First attack. First attack. Mm. 20,000. Mm. And the politicians walk away though. Mm. The problem is, isn't it, of course, you see, now if you, for instance, express, if you won't watch a D-Day celebration or you pour scorn on the whole thing of these memorials, you're considered to be disrespectful to those who died. I, I, quite I, the opposite, I think it's infuriating. <laughs> Sounds so monstrous. Actually, what, what, you, what you want to say is, because I love those who died, I don't want to have anything to do with the poppies. Poppies, quite. <laughs> so it's, this, this, when one... Uh, for some period of years, I, I, when I was making films that had a name religion over them, I began to find, obviously, that um, religions uh, ob obviously frequently been used as uh, temporary havens from fear of death. Obviously, they have. But, of course, one can't just stop there, because anything, a house, can have, be a religion in that sense, or a job or a distraction. So the world isn't quite so tidy, is it? Yes, sir. If we could only say the religions are doing it, we'd feel free. But it isn't the case. So what are we talking about? Well, I'm talking about fear of death. I feel, I, which isn't, a, but I, because I feel it to be pervasive, and I can't understand why, moment by moment in my life, there is some sort of censor or judge or... Something. Would you say death is part of play? Absolutely in the sense that um, good death is part of play. Huh? The good death is part of play. What do you mean by good death? Well, I just mean um, 
the possibility, if you climb a thing and may fall off it and don't care, then there's the possibility of the fall of the other side of the action. That's what I mean by a good death, a kind of the other part, the other half of the action, is what I mean by good Say, death. Say, for example, a very rich man who's got everything in life, mm. writes books and... And at the end of it, you say, I've jolly, I had a jolly good life, and yes. that's... Right? Yes. And those who are, there are those who are paralysed or maimed and all the, those terrible cases that are more and more increasing in the world. Okay. To them, that may be an extraordinary event. What may be an extraordinary event? The paralysed. Yes, 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 yes. Mm. The... Invalids, mm. the incurables. Are we talking about fear of death or fear of life, which makes us fearful of death? That's more like it. So, why are we afraid of life? What is the cause, what is the reason, many reasons that makes one fearful of living? I wish I knew. One of the, re uh, let's discuss, Please. one of it is, from childhood, I'm forced to learn, memorize. And I'm trained <coughs> to meet problems. My brain has, one's brain has been conditioned to solve mathematical problems from childhood. Mm. Uni college, university, problems, problems, problems. So the brain is conditioned to problems. And then it meets problems. And its, uh, its resolution of the problem is making the problem more complicated and in the solution of it, increase ten different other problems. That's what the politicians are doing. So you're talking about, I, very, very, I get something quite good. Mm. Uh, our education seems, as you describe it, to be a series of trial runs yes, for solving true. problems. But yeah. the problem when it arises is not the problem that you've done the trial run on, no, ever. No, Therefore, what happens? You apply the rules... The old that, rules. You apply the rules you've learned in the hope that they work. They don't And they work. don't. So, that's one of the real problems of human beings, <laughs> to have... to approach a problem without having problems at all. Very good. It would not be... Yes, in fact, I suppose, the way you're taught, the way you're taught defines the problem for yes, you, but the problem yes. may be quite, quite different. Yes. So you can only solve the problems you've been taught to solve. You can only see as problems things that you've been taught to solve, and maybe much greater and more terrifying things are killing you. Yeah. And therefore, you approach it with, pro with a brain that is trained to problem. Yes. Say, I mean, most religious people in the world believe in God. <coughs> and to reach that Godhead, you must torture yourself, you must fast, you must... Mm, undergo every kind of denial, mm. no sex, no, um, don't look around you, don't mm. feel anything, mm. control your desires, you fall. And we are conditioned to that. So I, to reach God, I go through all this. And you become a saint. Isn't it crazy when you come to think of it? That That's it. it. Is in, 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 in Christian scriptures, for instance, there's an enormous amount of stuff about people who are 
outsiders, about the prostitute and so on. But in the living, as the religion becomes hardened and institutionalized, yes, sir, it, it yes, isn't so, is it? You're crazy. The, so just let's look at it for a minute. <coughs> and we are afraid of living. Because we've lost, uh, we, then we say, what is the significance of living? What's the meaning of life? And not finding any, we invent. Mm. The philosophers come in, the specialists come in, and the psychologists come. You follow? Mm. We invent. Mm. And that invention becomes our security. Then I hold to that. Yes. I fight for that, kill for that. Like a poison, isn't it? I, that it seems like a poison when it's taken. This is what's happening, sir. You know why I'm here, actually. Uh, the, one of the reasons I'll tell you a little story that happened last time. That when I came here for the first time, there was two hours to wait, and I was put in a room and shown videotapes of you. Ah. And over two hours, I conceived quite a strong dislike for you. Dislike. Dislike. Good. A strong dislike. And um, then I went with my dislike to have lunch, and a, a voice behind me said, you should try the grated carrot, it's very good. <laughs> and that was you, and we got on fine after that. <laughs> now this is the curious thing, you see, I was obviously manufacturing, I was educating myself in you. I was trying to see what you were about, you see what I mean? Yeah. And getting all sorts of notions, and the effect of them was deeply depressing. Yeah. And yet, uh, carrots and your presence was fine. I have no problem with that. It's, uh, so I'm very extremely keen that anything we should say today should not be capable of giving any of that sort yes, of sir, feeling yes, that sir. we have anything of importance. Although, you know, you never know. Leon. We are discussing, aren't we, why life has become so meaningless. The tree doesn't ask that question. The tiger doesn't ask that question. Right? Mm. She says, I'm living. Mm. So. So, sir, if there is no conflict in living, I would never ask that question. I don't know if I'm convinced. No, I didn't, hear, I didn't understand the last sentence. If there is no conflict in one's life, yes. no conflict, whatever, yes. you will never ask that question. The question of the meaningless yeah, yeah. of life. What is the meaning of it all? Because implied in it is an idea of some perfection which you ought to be yeah. having. Yeah. Which is another fiction. Mm -hmm. So we, plunder, we, we sort of blunder from fiction to fiction. Illusion to illusion, fancied, and so on. Mm. And I suppose the awful truth is that any what, system... What makes human beings ask this question? Because in their own life it has no meaning. Mm. Going to the office from 9 o'clock to 5 o'clock till you're 60. Responsibilities, house, mortgage, insurance. Mm? Mm. And the conflict between relationships and so on, so on, so on. And at 65, 70, 80, you pop off. Mm. And then you say, well, what the? What, 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 what's the meaning what of it? What's it about? Mm. Then there is death. And then you say, I'm going to die, I hope I'll live next life. You follow? Yes. That whole cycle begins. Mm. Hope, despair, depression, fear. 
I have achieved so much this life. Mm. Mm. And what does it mean coming to the end of it all? I, I was told of a man, I met them both, who were enormously rich. Enormous. His cupboards were filled with them. Gold, uh, paper money of every description, especially Swiss. Mm-hmm. And he was dying. He said, I, as I can't take it with me, keep it all open. Keep all the cupboards open. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that I can, I can look at them as I'm dying. Yeah. Just think of... Wonderful. What a, what a wonderful last thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just have a feeling, you see, when you talk about death has a sort of, I mean, we know it's the obscenity, we know it's the thing we may not talk about. I mean, you know, last century was sex, we can't talk about death this century. I've got a feeling the absence of really living with it, sitting with it, uh, is, uh, I mean, just makes our situation so impossible. I'm not sure, sir. Ah. Of all, death means total ending. All the memories, all the experience, the knowledge, the attachments, the fears, the sorrows, the anxieties. Hey. Mm. It's like a, somebody cutting all the thread which we have gathered to pieces. Ending. I think. We ought to discuss what is the ending. Do we ever end? Or in the ending there is another continuity? I don't think... It seems unnecessary, yes. I I don't... I don't know. I haven't had ever much sense of starting or not much sense of the time going on and I have not much sense of my ending either. So I have every reason to believe that what is around will certainly no, take... No, no. Am I making yes, sense? Oh, yes. Yeah. What is ending? That is death, right? Mm. No. I may believe I shall be born next life. Mm. Death is something observed by somebody else, surely. Not only by somebody. I want to believe it. It's comforting. You want to think that... I want to believe it. It gives me great comfort. Say, but at least I have another chance. I see what you mean. Mm. I mean, the whole Asiatic world believes in reincarnation. Mm. And some of, the, some of that is accepted here now. Books are written, people say, I believe, and all the rest. Well, the afterlife, any, I mean, the afterlife, which is well generally believed, I think, in yes. this country, in this yes. tradition. You hear Christian world, they believe mm. in a different form of resurrection and so on. This is a subtle way of keeping you quiet about what's mm. going on now. Yeah. Mm. So, there is death, ending, and there is living. The living has become so... We don't have to go into it, we know it very well. Mm. And the, there is that waiting. Not waiting, it's there. Mm. Mm. We're all going to pop off, die. That's the question, right? There's a time interval. The time interval may be hundred years, or five years, or fifty years. Mm. It's time interval. Mm. And that during that time interval, I'm living. I'm, I'm acting, living, suffering, despair, all the rest of mm. it. I haven't solved this problem. This way of living, if there is a way of living in which there is no pain, there is no suffering, there is, you follow? Mm-hmm. 
And there is also the other, which is the ending of all this. Mm. Mm. Now, if there was no time interval, the two are together. Yeah. Therefore, which means ending everything every day. Yes. Yes. Your attachment, this is my school, my problem. Mm. You follow? Mm. That that makes the brain so small, limited. Mm. But it's, but our means of attachment are so extraordinary, aren't they? I mean one can congratulate oneself on getting rid of attachment A while B to Z <coughs> line up to take over. Yes, it's an extraordinary killing problem. So, is it possible to live that way? What do you think? Oh, yes, I am. I am. <laughs> oh, that's the only way to live, otherwise you go through hell. Sure. So that life is not uh, rather, life contains death. Living is death. Mm. So, every day, what you have collected, put it aside. Mm, sure. If I'm attached to this house, mm. I know death says, oh boy, you can't. It's the end of you. Mm. So I said, all right, I'm, I'll be free of attachment to this house. Mm. Be atta- anat- not attached. You follow? Not mm. say Yes, unattached, yes. You're that's completely right. free of it. Mm. And yet use it. This is the problem. That oh, that's where... Non-attachment can frequently go into a form of oh, no. resistance. No, no, no. That. So I, I'm living in this house. I'm responsible for this house. I'm responsible for what is happening here. But also I'm going to die. So while I'm living, I'm that day I'm fully responsible. And you're not responsible for the day when you're not here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah good. It must there must be something in us which thinks that life will hurt if we live it. Life hurts. If we live it. Yes, sir. We must have a feeling. You see, while the mind will say, oh yes, I know that it's stupid to believe in whatever it is, relationships or drink or the job or whatever it is, to be a little haven, while the mind is saying that, it must also subtly, with a quiet voice, be saying, but the alternative is more terrifying. (laughs) You see, that's why when I used to inquire, is there a be is there a becoming? And therefore the ending of becoming is fear. Mm. Ending of becoming is fear, yes. And is there a be is there a psychological becoming at all? But there is a Begin, becoming in the world. I mean, uh, uh, I'm a, one is apprentice to a <coughs> master carpenter, mm. and you gradually work with him till mm. you become as good as him. Sure. That he, that same attitude or that same activity is spilled over or extended into the other field. Mm. Psychological, the inner field, I must be become something. If I don't, I'm lost. Mm, mm, I'm a failure, I'm mm. depressed. I'm, look, you have become something, I'm nobody. That implies somehow that the later state is preferable to the earlier, yes, that the yes. master is preferable to the apprentice. I have a sort of feeling that the people I admire, as well as having their calendar age, have also stuck at another age. Yes, the people I really like are about three years old. 
<laughs> Children. Yes, but also people who yes. have got that curious sort of yes. wide-eyed thing. It's strange. So I'm always a bit suspicious at the thought of um, you know, building up to anything or a growth to something. I have a feeling that it's already been neglected. Does that make sense? That yes, it's already been here, <laughs> reclaiming one's childhood in some way. Hmm. And any way that one tries to devise to, as it were, break out of one's little prisons, whatever it is, because it's an idea, because it's an idea, has the fear written into itself as an idea. Idea, quite. So we are curiously... So idea becomes fear. That's right. So, and the idea of liberation is fear. <laughs> so we wait. No. What do we do then? <coughs> whether there is, a <coughs> whether it's possible to end fear. To end fear. End fear. Yes. Not of a particular fear, mm. but mm. end fear. Mm. The whole tree of fear. And we are trying to trim the fears, you know. Yes. What's the axe? Where how do you get at it? How do you? Yeah, I just, uh, we'll go into it. <laughs> we'll... What is time? What is time? Not by the watch no. clock. Sun rising, sun setting. I think it, it, I can only understand time from something that's past. Is that so, right? So, you've said it. So, time is that which has happened yesterday. That gives me the idea of time. Yeah. That which has happened yesterday. Right. Or a thousand yesterdays. Or 45,000 years. Mm. Man supposed to be on earth. That's the whole duration of 45,000 years. Which is in the present. The thought is in the present and everything we know of it is yes, in the present. Yes, all that is in yep. the present. Yep. And the future is the present. The projection. We assume there's going to be one, and we no, make it future, into a future. Tomorrow. Yeah, sure. You can't have it tomorrow. To You've got to have it now. No, no. The past, as we say, is n now, the present. That's how we must take it. Yes. But it's so actuality. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I remember meeting you hmm. last year. That's right. And I will meet. So there's that duration of time. Exactly. The recognition if I recognise this. Mm. And the future is the same as now. Because I'll meet you again mm. next mm. year and say, yes, hello, mm. hello. So. <laughs> yes. so the future is also now. So the, the present contains the past, the present and the future. So there is no future. I don't see what Yes, I do see what you mean. Yes. The future is what you are now. It's amazing how we inhabit this future, invented yeah, yes, future, sir. with ill possibilities yeah. and Lord knows what. Yeah. Mm. Yes. So the future is now. And if I if there is no Breaking down of the me now, I'll be tomorrow exactly the same. So, I, one question, say a question, whether there is any psychological evolution at all. You understand? Yes, I do. There isn't any. There, can't, there doesn't seem to be able to be, except some fiction again that somebody I, has invented in observing you. 
Yes. So I see, for me, there is no more or better. Better is future. Mm, good, yes. Better is measurement, what I should be. Mm. Mm. And so what I should be is an avoidance of what I am. Mm. So that creates a conflict. Yes. So if I act not theoretically or sentimentally, the actual fact that the whole of time is now. Therefore, there is no becoming, no ideal to be reached. <laughs> mm. Mm. That's such a radical thought. I mean, yeah. you know, there's a feeling about it that one's kind of heard it. It's, it's not an unfamiliar thought, but it's desperately unfamiliar. It yeah. challenges everything which one lives by. Tell me about this axe as well. I mean, the th I'm coming. Because <laughs> <laughs> I want to take it away. So, what is change? If I change according to the future ideal, that ideal is projected by thought, which is also implied time. Thought is time. So, as if, I under, if one really grasps the depth of this f statement or the feeling of time is all now. And so therefore, there is no tomorrow, in the sense, I will be to something tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So the, there is an ending to conflict, I don't know, mm -hmm. yeah. which is an enormous factor. We, we have accepted conflict as a way of life. There is no conflict at all. That is, there, I have to understand change. I am this, but if I don't change, I'll be exactly tomorrow what I am now. Mm. So what is change? Is there psychological change at all? I don't even understand. Mm. Mm. Or only what is? And the giving attention to what is the ending of what is. Yes, I uh. But I can't. But one can't give a total attention to what is when you have got an ideal. Yeah, that's right. When we say, I was asked to speak at the <coughs> United Nations. It's a contradictory in terms, United Nations, first of all. And they say we must gather together, become friends, evolve that blah. And it never takes place. But the principle is wrong. My country and your country. Mm. My God and your God. Mm. The Russians have their ideal. And Mm. So, if one really realize, feels the depth of this, all time is now, mm. the whole is like a, a lightning that changes. When or if all time, when you say all time is now, is now always joyous? Huh? Is now always happy? I don't use the word happy. Oh, all right. Uh, 
<laughs> you see? Why should we be happy? No, quite. That's my point. Why well, should be anything? Anything, indeed. You, you, you know, so there is <laughs> something which we should go into for time. And what is it to be nothing? Because we want to be something. Mm. The wanting is a sense of lacking. I haven't got a good house, I want a mm. better house. I am not, I don't know all the knowledge of books, I must read. Mm. So there's this tremendous craving. And for what is the craving for? I'm not a philosopher. I'm not talking. The, the no, no, I know. I, mm. To me, that's a, why do, what are we craving for? Mm. We want peace. We crave for peace, mm. and we live violently. Mm. Yeah, we always look for the sources of the violence outside ourselves. That's it. And therefore we say non-violence. Mm. While I'm, I have, why one hu a human being is violent, living violently, fighting, quarrelling, conflict, and is working for peace. Mm. Me, me. Mm. Now I'll tell you actually where the where my happy. I would. I would, didn't really. I mean, I wasn't really talking about happy in the sense that I think would <laughs> cause a problem. It was just. I remember there was a thing at a big exhibition at Olympia of uh, a mind, spirit, and something or other. There were many little booths with various people, various religious persuasions there, and they were all smiling. And they were selling this sort of smile, this blissed out quality, you know? And I ached to have one booth where everybody in it had a splitting headache. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and I just wanted to kind of go to them and be Quite there. Right. Not because it was either bad or good, because but that's also. One mustn't be kind of wanted. There's a the, the very great difficulty. I mean, anything you say, I can, um, it can so easily be associated with extremely destructive thoughts, can't it? Quite, too. Quite. I mean, this is this is your burden. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the word change implies I am this. I, I must be that. Want that. We are conditioned f from childhood to that. To expect it. So heavily conditioned. I see, I see a small car, I must have a bigger car. Mm. I see you on the television, and my God, why am I not there? We should be there together. You, <laughs> you know, this tremendous craving. Not just for publicity and that, but the inner craving for God, for illumination, for living a right life, and mm. that we must all work, be together. You know. mm. Why do we have such craving? No. Um, a very un I there's a great unlovedness about it, a yes, feeling sir. of actually yes, that you're not loved, and that possibly the larger car will put its arms round you in a way that the smaller car doesn't, and will make up for this. It's a displaced feeling of lack of affection, I would have thought, isn't it? Partly. Mm -hmm. It is. Is there... Is it in one oneself, the sense of insufficiency. I'm not loved. Oh. That feels to me very quite yeah. real, as I'm. I'm very... not loved. I I'm not loved by that woman or by that man. And I must be loved by that man. 
mm. or by that woman. Mm. But that leads her to, to a very other complex question, what is love? <laughs> hmm. I would tend to say possessiveness. Of course it is. Attachment, possessiveness, jealousy, sexual pleasure. Uh, desire for hmm, more. Hmm. It's also self-love, isn't it? I want experience. No, it's all we call all that area of self-love. Yes, yes. Uh, somebody, I mean, some person told me, how can there be love without jealousy? Which means without hate. Yeah. You follow? Sure. Yeah. Well, in the sense of possession, they can't. Yes. And then for one asks, what is the relationship between love and death? Love in the sense we're talking about it. Oh, it's possession. Uh, possession, all that, the whole yeah. um, idea. In that one word, so, so much things are contained. Mm. If you're saying perfect love casteth out fear, I, no, no, it's not I, perfect, no, no, I don't know what... Don't no, exactly, I, I know, I know. <laughs> It's a killer. <laughs> if you ask that question, sir, what is love? And what is that state of love with death? The love in the ordinary sense of that word. Mm. Uh, is there any relationship at all? And if it has a relationship, how does that show itself? How does that manifest itself? I can see love in the sense we're talking about it as a series of faulty insurance schemes against death. Yes. Where the house, where the insurance house is really bound to collapse. But you still take out the insurance. We never ask, first of all, we never ask that question. The connection between mm. love and love. Mm. As we're plunging into love, we certainly do. Yeah. Well, now, if you ask that question, I put you that question for me. What's your response to it? To? To that question. The connect connection? Yeah. What's the connection? What's the relationship? Is there any relationship? If there is, what is nature? Well, it feels like an attempt to ward it off, to have it not happen. It's a uh, uh, possession in the terms, terms we're talking about. It is an attempt to have a permanence where there can be no permanence. Therefore, it's an attempt to contradict the fact That's that it. things die. Death is impermanent. Death is impermanent. Death is a, a permanent word to describe an impermanence. Yeah. Death is impermanent. Yeah. And possessiveness, hoping for permanence. Absolutely. An attempt to make it go on forever. Go on forever. Yes. It's curious how love poetry, has, at least cheap love poetry, has always got a doing everything forever. Oh, I know. Isn't it? Good love poetry is usually about things collapsing. What is the relationship? Hmm. What is the relationship between darkness and light? Well, you can't have one without the other. No. To, uh, to us, that is that. You can't... I, but I'm asking the relationship between the two. Could you tell me? That is, darkness. We know when there is... Hmm. No moonlight, no stars, nothing. Dark in a forest. Mm. I've been like you know, dark, mm. absolutely impenetrable darkness. And the 
the sun comes up and everything is light. What's the relationship between that and that? You tell me. <laughs> I don't think there is any. <laughs> really? Light is light. Wait, let me put it the other way. What is the relationship between good and bad? Is there a relationship at all? Well, if I could, before, before we do good and bad, if I could do dark and light, if, I have, if I'm asked to describe something, ah, yes. if I'm asked to describe it, then I do need the presence of one before I can do the other. For instance, if, I, uh, if I'm describing this forest which I can't, in which I can't see a tree, that's darkness. And then, of course, when the light comes up, the tree has become visible. So you are judging light and darkness according to your perception? Yes. Hmm? That's, that's right. That's so obvious. Yes, that's right. Hmm. But it's only when I come to have to describe it yes, that the course, relationship course. exists because of that. But move a little further, sure. deeper. What is the relationship between that which is good and that which is so called evil or bad? Is the, is the good born out of the bad? Because I know what is bad, or experience that which is painful, bad, or the rest of it. Mm. And so, I'm moving or trying to get away from the bad to the good. I would use good or bad to describe very temporary. No, I'm just... No, no, not, no. Not getting it's your good temporary. Yes. That which is good, that which is beautiful, is not temporary. Why not? I'll show you, just look, let's look at it for a minute. If the good, or any other word you like to use, is the outcome of the bad, has its root in the bad, then it's not good. It's mm. part mm. of the bad. Mm. So, every opposite has its the root in its own opposite. Mm, good, I get that. So, is there a good which is not born out of the bad? Not something that I could give that word to. Huh? I couldn't give that word to it. No, because give another word, it doesn't matter. Mm. This good old-fashioned word, mm. the good, mm. the beautiful, the truth. But um, now, I'm, I question altogether whether there is an opposite at all. To good, to good in the sense no, we're talking. No, the opposite. Any opposite. Any opposite. Yes. Yes. Of course, there is man, woman, tall, short. Sure. Not, These are conveniences. Yeah. Apart from the conveniences. Mm. Is there something so absolute and not mm. related to the relevant? Mm. I would be always conditional myself yeah. about handling yeah. it. I couldn't do it in any other way. Yeah. I'd be very frightened of people who do, because they become murderers. Oh, no, no, on the contrary. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I mean, the freedom of goodness Not the misuse of freedom, of good, mm, mm. of freedom. The misuse of freedom is what is happening in the world. Mm. But freedom is good. It's, it has goodness quality in it. It's in, I don't like to use the word moral virtue, no, that has no meaning. No. Mm, mm. But that sense of depth in it. Well, we're, we're somehow alongside fear again, an absence of fear. I, but that's what, of course. Aren't we? That's why we said, is it possible <coughs> to be free of fear, mm. totally? Mm. 
not what might happen of which I'm not afraid, or that which has happened of which I'm afraid, mm. Mm. but these two elements, the past and the future, is now. Right? Mm. So, can the now, which is fear, be completely wiped away? Almost the presence of now, as you would handle it, is dependent on one's having these fictions of yes, past right. and future that's, with one. That's right. So even to say, to talk about now is risky. Yes, but one has to use that word present now. Uh, yeah. You're sitting there and I'm sitting sure. there. Sure. That's now. Yeah. But you've got to get the scalpel further. Of course, of course. I mean, you have to have a little bit subtlety in this other people <laughs> law. <laughs> yes. That's right. Mm. But the fear remains until the knife has gone much further that's it, that's it. than now. now. Yes, of course. So what is fear? No, not theoretically, actually in my heart, in one's brain. What is fear? How does it come? What is the source of it, the root of it? The beginning of it. It's, it's people, I mean, roughly, off the top of my head, too, is something to do with not being in the right place, a feeling of not filling where you should be. It's an ought is involved in fear. You ought to be. You ought, uh, this shape, no, that shape. We've said that. Yeah. You ought to be, I'll yeah. be. Let's put it. Talking a, about another fear. Fear. All, all this is fear. Mm. What's the root of it? I mean, we said fear is like a vast tree, that mm. there's a marvellous tree here, an oak. It covers the ground, mm. an acre. Mm. Really, so. Now, our fear is like that. But the root of that oak is there in the centre. Mm. Mm. The branches are enormous. What is the root there? How would you describe the root? Are you asking me to describe it? How not describe the fact of it is time and thought. Mm. Mm. We can play with thought, but not. No, time and thought are the root of fear. We are trying to get re- mm. to be mm. taught to understand whether it's possible to be free of fear, totally, completely. Psychologically, we'll talk about mm. and <clears throat> the root of that, the beginning, the from which all the oak tree grows becomes enormous. The root of it is time and thought. Mm. Time being, I will be, if I'm not, I'm frightened. Mm. Right? Thought says, I have been, and my God, I hope I'll be. Is there a sort of fear that's not connected with thought? Or is all fear connected? Is all connected with thought? All connected with thought. Of course. There isn't a, there, if some, suddenly something happens to you which then that, that the sec- organism... And that that second, the, there is no fear. But then thought comes The intervention right. of thought, yeah. however rapidly, yeah. beyond the speed of light, of and then the reactive yeah. fear. Yes. Yes. Good. Then the question, <laughs> this very question arises, can thought in certain areas be active? Writing a letter of so on. Like, like writing a like, letter, writing, yes, talking, yes, and so on. Yes. Active, mm. fully active. Mm. And other areas, not at all. Which in the psychological world, not at all. Mm. Mm. Discursive thought, I've never understood at all. I've never had any feeling for actually even putting sentences together. I've always worked, I've always felt that the things that have ever made sense to me have come like that. They're, it's like but sudden flashes thought, of a thing. our thought is linear. 
Well, we're trained in a linear way, but uh, I've never I felt comfortable. We are trained. Oh, like the Chinese, they... Sure. It's still linear. It is linear. That's right, yes. That's the schooling, isn't it? That's, that's where you but pass off failure. Thinking exam. is a series of connections, mm. associations. Mm. Always... Mm. So you're running a school based on thought to stop thinking? No. No. Thought is necessary in certain areas. Absolutely. That requires a great deal of attention, great deal of knowledge, great deal of capacity, skill, uh, and ingenuity, invention. Sure. And is it that same activity has spilled over or extended into the other area? Very good. Yes, that's excellent. To know it for where, it, where it's useful, to have it as a useful there tool. There is, of course. Yeah. Mm. If I understand, really see the depth of it, seriousness of it, then my question, but why is it thought is always moving, active in the psychological world? Mm. Mm. In the psychological world is the me. My consciousness, my f- failure, my success, my reputation, my I must be, I must not be. Mm. <coughs> my faith, my belief, my dogma, my religious attitude, politics, mm. fear, pains, pleasure, suffering, all that is me. Mm. All that is memory. Yes. Eh? Yes. So all that is memory. Me is memory. Mm. Mm. And the me, if you're brought up in, like a lot of us are in this country, in an extreme... Uh, uh, all over the world. <laughs> all over the world, maybe, in a sort of Bunyan tradition yes. of you hold your own, you, you're responsible for yourself. I mean, yes. there is an element again in which that makes sense. There's an also an element in which it's quite, quite destructive. I remember hearing a, somebody tell me a story, I think in Japan, of... Uh, he said it was a possible way of life. A man running away from his own shadow, oh, yes. who then realised that all he had to do was to hop under a tree and the shadow disappeared. And I remember feeling immediately very methodistical about that, thinking <laughs> you may not <laughs> yes. get away from your shadow. But obviously you may and must. Mm. The thought and time <coughs> are the root of fear. Why does <coughs> why does thought come into this world, into the area, realm of the psyche? No wonder. Is it that it? I mean, it it. it appears to stop danger, because when you have a thought, it's like asbestos to hold something hot. It, you have the illusion that with the thought you could control something, which in its yeah. uncontrolled state might be overwhelming. So that is, there is the thinker who holds something hot, mm. and the thought that said, don't hold it. Yes. Beware. So there is... Two separate entities, the thinker mm. and the object of which you think. Mm. Now, what is the thinker? A thought. Right? Yeah. Thought says, I'm the thinker, mm. separate from. <laughs> yeah. But to realize that the observer, the thinker, the experiencer is the experience, is the object of one. They are not separate. So that means a tremendous revolution, inwardly, psychologically. 
which means when there is no division, there is no conflict. There is only that fact. And when you give attention to the fact, the fact is burnt away. Mm. But thought is kept uh, to plant a tree. Yes, of course. Bring that mm. flower into Makes exist. sense, yes. Mm. So if you give attention to that, then that will never create problems. I don't. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I understand. It's bringing. You see, everything we're saying is bringing something to a T junction. Yes, sir. It's that because uh, we can't conceive. It's dis- it's uncomfortable for us to think that you have to shed various ways of handling. And the, the other world. day, somebody said you have to burn your icons. <laughs> burn your icons, indeed. Yes, and that's uncomfortable. And there's no way past it. Hmm. So. When you burn your icons, death is... You understand? Yes. Mm. And also, I don't know if you've gone into this, not theoretically, but actually. What is creation? Not invention, I'm not talking invention. Mm. Invention is born out of knowledge. Mm. The scientists can invent more atom bombs, more, mm. or something new. Mm. But it's always born out of knowledge. Mm. What is creation in what sense? Creation which is not born out of knowledge. Mm. Because knowledge is limited. Is limited. Limited, yes, indeed. Now or in the future. And it's pre limited, you know. Yeah, it's limited. Mm. If creation is born of knowledge, it's not creation. Mm. It's invention, it is Mm. all kinds of things. Certainly, even in my, uh, in whatever I've done, humdrum ways, some there have been odd moments, maybe writing something, where it has not seemed, where certainly it was not any form of pre-knowledge which created it, but when boundary, my boundaries seem, seemed almost to be illusory, and that I was not as confined for some reason, and then something else was fed in, and then you write something or you do something which has a, no, a muscle which is let's not be yours. Clear. Is Creation must creation must always be expressed. Yes? Sorry, must must must, must it must. always be expressed? Put it into writing, in a sculpture, in doing painting. You follow? Yes, I don't I don't see why it should at all have to be expressed. So good. <laughs> if we both of us see the fact that creation cannot be born out of knowledge. Yes, that's for sure. What born out of knowledge is vast invention mm. of various kinds mm. and various levels mm. and so on and so on. Right. But is there a state of mind, brain or mind, where knowledge is not? I mean, this is and where creation is? Where creation is. You understand, yes, what I do. Uh, you understand what we're saying, such day, you know? Well, I think, I mean, there must... Yeah, I, I mean. There is. What I, I, I'm sure there is. I don't... A lived... Well, a lived... Why should one have to write it? That seems an awfully... That seems no, I, I mean... I don't know if... First of all... Am I who have been writing, talking, or inventing, and call my invention creation? I paint a picture. Oh. That is a marvelous creation. 
uh, uh, Leonardo paints something. That's what marvelous creation that is. We, have, we use that word both uh, as an invention and also... We do. Mm. It's an end stop. It's yeah. a product, yeah. isn't product. it? We use it That's as a product. It. Product. But when you get uh, the uh, sketches by, say, a master, because we may as well use their example, the, a sketch, an incomplete thing, part of a process, somehow makes you tingle in a way that maybe the fin finish, finished thing doesn't. Of course, of course. Because the, pa the patron, the man who's paid for the picture, somehow comes into it frequently at the stage when it has to be completed, whereas the energy, whatever was going on in the making of it, that didn't have to push it to that conclusion and is present in an early stage. See, this has been one of the questions that have been asked by the most ancient people. Hmm? That is, is there a state of my brain, mind, where knowledge ends? Though it's useful in other mm. direction, mm. don't ask. Mm. 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 Complete ending of it. Then only there is something new. And that thing is creation. Mm. That, is, no, that is creation. You understand? The end of knowledge is creation. Yes. Yeah. Itself, yes. yes. That's quite, I mean, not, not a discipline of conformity, but tremendous alertness in what a sense of deep watchfulness that the other doesn't slip in. Mm. You have to shed everything then. Yes. You, you wouldn't be who you are with all it, what, you know. It's a scary thought. Mm. We better stop because it's called we past one. Yes, we've done well. Yes. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Do we stop? <laughs>